Nigger. In the English language, the word nigger is an ethnic slur typically directed at black people. The word originated in the 18th century as an adaptation of the Spanish negro, a descendant of the Latin adjective niger which means black. It was used derogatorily, and by the mid-20th century, particularly in the United States, its usage became unambiguously pejorative, a racist insult. Accordingly, it began to disappear from popular culture, and its continued inclusion in classic works of literature has sparked controversy. Because the term is considered extremely offensive, it is often referred to be the euphemism the N-word. The variants Nagar and Nagar derive from various Mediterranean language words for black, including the Spanish and Portuguese word, black, and the now pejorative French negra. Etymologically, negro, noir, negra, and nigger ultimately derive from nigrum, the stem of the Latin, black pronounced which, in every other grammatical case, grammatical gender, and grammatical number besides nominative masculine singular, is nigger followed by a case ending, the R is trill. In its original English language usage, nigger, then spelled niger, was a word for a dark-skinned individual. The earliest known published use of the term dates from 1574, in a work alluding to the nigers of Ethiop, bearing wittens. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, the first derogatory usage of the term nigger was recorded two centuries later, in 1775. In the colonial America of 1619, John Rolfe used niggers in describing the African slaves shipped to the Virginia colony. Later American English spellings, nigger and nigger, prevailed in a northern colony, New York under the Dutch, and in metropolitan Philadelphia's Moravian on Pennsylvania Dutch communities. The African burial ground in New York City originally was known by the Dutch name Begraf Plots van de Nigger, Cemetery of the Negro, an early occurrence of Nigger in Rhode Island dates from 1625. Lexicographer Noah Webster, whose eponymous dictionary did much to solidify the distinctive spelling of American English, suggested the Nigger spelling in place of Negro in 1806. The dialect spoken in the southern United States changed the pronunciation of Negro to Nigra. During the fur trade of the early 1800s to the late 1840s in the western United States, the word was spelled nigger, and is often recorded in literature of the A time. George Frederick Ruxton used it in his Mountain Man lexicon, without pejorative connotation. Nigger was evidently similar to the modern use of dude or guy. This passage from Ruxton's life in the Far West illustrates the word in spoken form, the speaker here referring to himself, traveler, marm, this nigger's no traveler, I are a trapper. Marm, a mountain man, Vogue. It was not used as a term exclusively for blacks among mountain men during these period, as Indians, Mexicans, and Frenchmen and Anglos alike could be a nigger. The noun slipped back and forth from derogatory to endearing. The term colored or negro became a respectful alternative. In 1851 the Boston Vigilance Committee, an abolitionist organization, posted warnings to the colored people of Boston and vicinity. Writing in 1904, Journalist Clifton Johnson documented the appropriate character of the word nigger, emphasizing that it was chosen in the South precisely because it was more offensive than colored or negro. By the turn of the century, colored had become sufficiently mainstream that it was chosen as the racial self-identifier for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. In 2008, Carla Sims, its communications director, said the term colored is not derogatory. The NAACP chose the word colored because it was the most positive a description commonly used, in 1909, when the association was founded. It's outdated and antiquated but not offensive. Canadian writer Lawrence Hill changed the title of his 2007 novel The Book of Negroes. The name refers to a real historical document, but he felt compelled to find another name for the American market, retitling the U.S. edition Someone Knows My Name. 19th century literature features usages of nigger without racist connotation. Mark Twain, in the autobiographic book Life on the Mississippi, 1883, used the term within quotes, indicating reported speech, but used the term negro when writing in his own narrative persona. Joseph Conrad published a novella in Britain with the title The Nigger of the Narcissus, 1897, but was advised to release it in the United States as The Children of the Sea, see below. By the late 1960s, the social change brought about by the civil rights movement had legitimized the racial identity word black as mainstream American English usage to denote black-skinned Americans of African ancestry. President Thomas Jefferson had used this word of his slaves in his notes on the state of Virginia 1785, 
but black had not been widely used until the later 20th century. See Black Pride, and, in the context of worldwide anti-colonialism initiatives, negritude. In the 1990s, black was displaced in favor of African American, an example of what linguist Steven Pinker calls the euphemism treadmill. Moreover, as a compound word, African American resembles the Vogue word Afro-American, an early 1970s popular usage. Some black Americans continue to use the word nigger, often spelled as nigga nigga, without irony, either to neutralize the word's impact or as a sign of solidarity. In the 1990s, Dun Kuhn would also evolve as an equivalent of the variant San Nigger, an epithet directed at persons of Middle Eastern heritage. H. W. Fowler in a Dictionary of Modern English Usage, 1926, states that applying the word nigger to others than full or partial Negroes is felt as an insult by the person described, and betrays in the speaker, if not deliberate insolence, at least a very arrogant inhumanity, but the second edition, 1965 states, and has been described as the term that carries with it all the obloquy and contempt and rejection which whites have inflicted on blacks. Surveys from 2006 showed that the American public widely perceived usage of the term to be wrong or unacceptable, but that nearly half of whites and two-thirds off blacks knew someone personally who referred to blacks by the term. Nearly one-third of whites and two-thirds of blacks said that they themselves had personally used the term in the last five years. In explaining his refusal to be conscripted to fight the Vietnam War, 1965-75, professional boxer Muhammad Ali said, No Viet Cong, Vietnamese soldier, ever called me nigger. Later, his modified answer was the title No Vietnamese Ever Called Me Nigger, 1968, of the documentary about the frontline lot of the U.S. Army black soldier in combat in Vietnam. An Ali biographer reports that, when interviewed by Robert Lipsight in 1966, the boxer actually said, I ain't got no quarrel with them Viet Cong. On February 28, 2007, the New York City Council symbolically banned the use of the word nigger, however, there is no penalty for using it. This formal resolution also requests excluding from Grammy Award consideration every song whose lyrics contain the word, however, Ron Roker, vice president of communication for the Recording Academy, doubted that it will have any effect on actual nominations. The word can be invoked politically for effect. When Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick came under intense scrutiny for his personal conduct in 2008, he deviated from an address to city council, saying, In the past 30 days, I've been called a nigger more than any time in my entire life. Opponents accused him of playing the race card to save his political life. Historian Eugene Genovese, noted for bringing a Marxist perspective to the study of power, class and relations between planters and slaves in the South, uses the word pointedly in the world the slaveholders made, 1988. In his 1999 memoir, All Souls, Irish-American Michael Patrick MacDonald describes how many white residents of the old colony housing project in South Boston use this meaning to degrade the people considered to be of lower status, whether white or black. Addressing the use of nigger by black people philosopher and public intellectual Cornell West said in 2007 the implied racism of the word nigger has rendered its use a social taboo. Magazines and newspapers generally do not use the word but instead print censored versions such as NGGR, NGAR, N, or the N-word, see below. In 2018, the head of the media company Netflix, Reed Hastings, fired his chief communications officer for using the word twice during internal discussions about sensitive words. In explaining why, Hastings wrote. In the U.S., the word nigger featured in branding and packaging consumer products, for example, nigger hair tobacco and nigger head oysters. As the term became less acceptable in mainstream culture, the tobacco brand became bigger hair and the canned goods brand became negro head. An Australian company produced various sorts of licorice candy under the nigger boy label. These included candy cigarettes and one box with an image of an Indian snake charmer. Compare these with the various national varieties and names for chocolate-coated marshmallow treats, and with Darley, formerly Darky, toothpaste. Some colloquial or local names for plants and animals used to include the word nigger or niggerhead. The colloquial names for echinacea, coneflower, Arkansas niggerhead and wild niggerhead. The cotton-top cactus, Echinocactus polycephalus is a round, cabbage-sized plant covered with large, crooked thorns and used to be known in Arizona as the niggerhead cactus. In the early 20th century, devil-crested cormorants, 
Philacracor exortis, were known in some areas of Florida as nigger geese. In some parts of the U.S., Brazil nuts were known as nigger toes. The nigger head termite, Nasuda termes gruvilis, is a native of Australia. One of the first films of Horace Ove was Baldwin's Nigger, 1968, in which two African Americans, novelist James Baldwin and comedian Dick Gregory, discuss black experience and identity in Britain and the United States. Filmed at the West Indian Students Centre in London, the film documents a lecture by Baldwin and a question and answer session with the audience. The film Blazing Saddles, 1974, used the term repeatedly. In the Kentucky Fried movie, 1977, the sequence titled Danger Seekers features a stuntman performing the dangerous act of shouting niggers at a group of black people, then fleeing when they chase him. The film Full Metal Jacket, 1987, depicts black and white U.S. Marines enduring boot camp and later fighting together in Vietnam. Nigger is used by soldiers of both races in jokes and as expressions of bravado. Put a nigger behind the trigger, says the black corporal eight ball, with racial differences among the men seen as secondary to their shared exposure to the dangers of combat. Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, R. Lear May, says, there is no racial bigotry here. I do not look down on niggers, kikes, wops or greasers. Here you are all equally worthless. Gay Niggers from Outer Space, 1992, a Danish-English language film, features black homosexual male aliens who commit gendercide to free the men of Earth from female oppression. Die Hard with a Vengeance, 1995, featured a scene where villain Simon Peter Gruber, Jeremy Irons, required New York City Police Department Lieutenant John McClane, Bruce Willis, to wear a sandwich board reading I hate niggers while standing on a street corner in predominantly black Harlem, resulting in McLean meeting Zeus Carver, Samuel L. Jackson, as Carver rescued McLean from being attacked by neighborhood toughs. American film director Quentin Tarantino has been criticized for the heavy usage of the word nigger in his movies, especially in Jackie Brown, where the word is used 38 times and Django Unchained, used 110 times. During World War II there was a dog called Nigger, a black Labrador belonging to Royal Air Force Wing Commander Guy Gibson. In 1943, Gibson led the successful Operation Chastise attack on dams in Nazi Germany. The dog's name was used as a single code word whose transmission conveyed that the Moni Dam had been breached. In the 1955 film The Dam Busters, based on the raid, the dog was portrayed in several scenes, his name and the code word were mentioned several times. Some of the, these scenes were sampled in the 1982 film Pink Floyd, The Wall. In 1999, the British television network ITV broadcast a censored version with each of the 12 utterances of nigger deleted. Replying to complaints against its censorship, ITV blamed the regional broadcaster, London Weekend Television, which, in turn, blamed a junior employee as the unauthorized censor. In June 2001, when ITV rebroadcast the censored version of the Dam Busters, the Index on Censorship criticized it as unnecessary and ridiculous censorship breaking the continuity of the film and the story. In January 2012 the film was shown uncensored on ITV4, but with a warning at the start that the film contained racial terms from the historical period which some people could find offensive. Versions of the film edited for U.S. television have the dog's name altered to trigger. In a remake of The Dam Busters by Peter Jackson announced in 2008, Stephen Fry, the writer of the screenplay, said there was no question in America that you could ever have a dog called the N-word. In the remake the dog's name is Digger. The use of nigger in older literature has become controversial because of the word's modern meaning as a racist insult. It is an autobiographical novel by Harriet E. Wilson, a free Negro herself. It was published in 1859 and rediscovered in 1981 by literary scholar Henry Louis Gates Jr. It is considered the first novel published by an African-American woman on the North American continent. In 1897, Joseph Conrad penned a novella titled The Nigger of the Narcissus, whose titular character, James Waite, is a West Indian black sailor on board the merchant ship Narcissus sailing from Bombay to London. In the United States, the novel was first published with the title The Children of the Sea. A Tale of the Folksal, at the insistence by the publisher, Dodd, Mead, and Company, that no one would buy or read a book with the word nigger in its title, not because the word was deemed offensive but that a book about a black man would not sell. In 2009, Wordbridge Publishing published a new edition titled The N-Word of the Narcissus, which also excised the word nigger from the text.
According to the publisher, the point was to get rid of the offensive word, which may have led readers to avoid the book, and make it more accessible. Though praised in some quarters, many others denounced the change as censorship. The writer and photographer Carl Van Vechten took the opposite view to Conrad's publishers when he advised the British novelist Ronald Furbank to change the title of his 1924 novel Sorrow in Sunlight to Prancing Nigger for the American Market, and it became very successful there under that title. Van Vechten, a white supporter of the Harlem Renaissance, 1920s 30s, then used the word himself in his 1926 novel Nigger Heaven, which provoked controversy in the black community. Of the controversy, Langston Hughes wrote, Ten Little Niggers was the original title of Agatha Christie's 1939 detective novel, named for a children's counting out game familiar in England at that date. It was renamed first to Ten Little Indians and then in the early 1980s to And Then There Were None. Flannery O'Connor uses a black lawn jockey as a symbol in her 1955 short story The Artificial Nigger. Lobby Sif, the singer songwriter best known for Something Inside, So Strong, entitled his first book of poetry Simply Nigger, Xavier Books 1993. Mark Twain's novel Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, 1885, has long been the subject of controversy for its racial content. Huckleberry Finn was the fifth most challenged book during the 1990s, according to the American Library Association. The novel is written from the point of view, and largely in the language, of an uneducated white boy who is drifting down the Mississippi River on a raft with an adult escaped slave, Jim. The word nigger is used, mostly about Jim, over 200 times. Twain's advocates note that the novel is composed in then contemporary vernacular usage, not racist stereotype, because Jim, the black man, is a sympathetic character. In 2011, a new edition published by New South Books replaced the word nigger with slave and also removed the word engine. The change was spearheaded by Twain scholar Alan Gribben in the hope of countering the preemptive censorship that results from the books being removed from school curricula over language concerns. The changes sparked outrage from critics Elon James, Alexandra Petrie, and Chris Meadows. Several late 19th and early 20th century British literary usages suggest neutral usage. The popular Victorian era entertainment, the Gilbert and Sullivan operetta The Mikado, 1885, twice uses the word nigger. In the song, the executioner, Coco, sings of executing the nigger serenader and the others of his race, referring to white singers with their faces blacked singing minstrel songs. In the song, the Mikado sings of the punishment for older women who dye their hair or wear corsets, to be blacked like a nigger slash with permanent walnut juice. Both lyrics are usually changed for modern performances. The word nigger appears in children's literature. How the Leopard Got His Spots, in the Just So Stories, 1902, by Rudyard Kipling, tells of an Ethiopian man and a leopard, both originally sand-colored, deciding to camouflage themselves with painted spots, for hunting in tropical forests. The story originally included a scene wherein the leopard, now spotted, asks the Ethiopian man why he does not want spots. In contemporary editions of How the Leopard Got His Spots, the Ethiopian's original reply, Oh, plain black's best for a nigger has been edited too, oh, plain black's best for me. The counting rhyme known as Eeny Meeny Meeny Missouri has been attested from 1820, with many variants, when Kiplange included it as a counting out song in Land and Sea Tales for Scouts and Guides, 1923, he gave as its second line, Catch a Nigger by the Toe. This version became widely used for much of the 20th century, the rhyme is still in use, but the second line now uses Tiger instead. The word nigger is used innocently and without malice by the child characters in some of the Swallows and Amazons series, written in the 1930s by Arthur Ransom, for example in referring to how the, white, characters appear in photographic negatives, look like niggers to me, in the Big Six, and as a synonym for black pearls in Peter Duck. Editions published by Puffin after Ransom's death changed the word to Negroes. The first Jeeves novel, Thank You, Jeeves, 1934 features a minstrel show as a significant plot point. Bertie Wooster, who is trying to learn to play the banjo, is in admiration of their artistry and music. Tellingly, P.G. Woodhouse has the repeated phrase nigger minstrels only on the lips of Wooster and his peers, the manservant Jeeves uses the more genteel negroes. In short story The Basement Room, 1935, by Graham Greene, the, sympathetic, servant character, Baines, tells the admiring boy, son of his employer, 
of his African British colony service, you wouldn't believe it now, but I've had 40 niggers under me, doing what I told them to. Replying to the boy's question, did you ever shoot a nigger? Baines answers, I never had any call to shoot. Of course I carried a gun dot but you didn't need to treat them bad, that just made them stupid. Why, I loved some of those damned niggers. The cinematic version, The Fallen Idol, 1948, directed by Carol Reed, replaced this usage with natives. Virginia Woolf, in her 1941 posthumously published novel Between the Acts, wrote down amongst the bushes she worked like a nigger. The phrase is not dialogue from one of the characters, nor is it in the context of expressing a point of view of one of the characters. Wolf's usage of racist slurs has been examined in various academic writings. The Reverend W. V. Audrey's The Railway Series, 1945 72 story Henry's Sneeze, originally described soot covered boys with the phrase as black as niggers. In 1972, after complaints, the description was edited to as black as soot, in the subsequent editions. Reverend Audrey is known for Thomas the Tank Engine, 1946. The folk song O. Oh, Susanna by Stephen Foster had originally been written in four verses. The second verse describes an industrial accident which killed 500 nigger by electrocution. The 1932 British song The Sun Has Got His Hat On originally included the line He's been tanning niggers out in Timbuktu, where he is the sun. Modern recordings substitute other lines. The Bohemian composer Antonin Dvorak wrote the string quartet No. 12 in 1893 during his time in the United States. For its presumed association with African American music, the quartet was referred to until the 1950s with nicknames such as Negro Quartet and Nigger Quartet before being called the American Quartet. In the 1960s, record producer J. D. J. Miller published pro racial segregation music with the Red Rebel label featuring racist songs by Johnny Rebel and others, demeaning black Americans in the civil rights movement. The country music artist David Allen Coe used the racial terms redneck, white trash, and nigger in the songs If That Ain't Country, I'll Kiss Your Ass and Nigger Fucker. The punk band The Dead Kennedys used the word in their 1980 song Holiday in Cambodia in the line, bragging that you know how the niggers feel cold and the slums got so much soul. The context is a section mocking champagne socialists. Rap groups such as NWA, Niggas with Attitudes, repopularized the usage in their songs. One of the earliest uses of the word in hip hop was in the song New York, New York by Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five in 1983. Responding to accusations of racism after referring to niggers in the lyrics of the 1988 Guns N' Roses song, One in a Million, Axl Rose stated, I was pissed off about some black people that were trying to rob me. I wanted to insult those particular black people. I didn't want to support racism. The term white nigger is also used in music, most notably in Elvis Costello's song Oliver's Army, see below. The musical Showboat, which subverts anti-miscegenation laws, from 1927 until 1946 features the word nigger as originally integral to the lyrics of Oldman River and Cotton Blossom. Although deleted from the cinema versions, it is included in the 1988 Emmy recording of the original score. Musical theater historian Miles Kruger and conductor John McGlynn proposed that the word was not an insult, but a blunt illustration of how white people then perceived black people. Some comedians have broached the subject, almost invariably in the form of social commentary. This was perhaps most famously done by stand up comedian Chris Rock in his Niggas vs. Black People routine. Richard Pryor used to use nigger extensively, but later in life decided to restrict himself to motherfucker. A shade of dark brown used to be known as nigger brown or simply nigger, other colors were also prefixed with the word dot usage as a color word continued for some time after it was no longer acceptable about people. Nigger brown commonly identified a color in the clothing industry and advertising of the early 20th century. During the Spanish-American War U.S. Army General John J. Pershing's original nickname, Nigger Jack, given to him as an instructor at West Point because of his service with Buffalo Soldier Units, was euphemized to Black Jack by reporters. In the first half of the 20th century, before Major League Baseball was racially integrated, dark-skinned and dark-complexioned players were nicknamed Nig. Examples are, Johnny Beasley, 1941-49, Joe Barry, 1921-22, Bobby Bragan, 1940-48, Nig Clark, 1905-20. Nick Cuppy, 1892-1901, Nick Fuller, 1902, Johnny Grabowski, 1923-31, Nick Lipscomb, 1937, 
Charlie Niebergall, 1921-24, Nick Perrine, 1907, and Frank Smith, 1904-15. The 1930s movie The Bowery with George Raft and Wallace Beery includes a sports bar in New York City named Nigger Joe's. In 1960, a stand at the stadium in Toowoomba, Australia, was named the E. S. Nigger Brown stand honoring 1920s rugby league player Edwin Brown, so ironically nicknamed since early life because of his pale white skin, so known all his life, his tombstone is engraved Nigger. Stephen Hagen, a lecturer at the Kumbari Slash and Gurpai Lag Higher Education Center of the University of Southern Queensland, sued the Toowoomba Council over the use of Nigger in the stand's name, the district and state courts dismissed his lawsuit. He appealed to the High Court of Australia, who ruled the Naming matter beyond federal jurisdiction. At first some local Aborigines did not share Mr. Hagen's opposition to nigger. Hagen appealed to the United Nations, winning a committee recommendation to the Australian federal government, that it forced the Queensland state government to remove the word nigger from the S. Nigger Brown stand name. The Australian federal government followed the High Court's jurisdiction ruling. In September 2008, the stand was demolished. The Queensland sports minister, Judy Spence, said that using nigger would be unacceptable, for the stand or on any commemorative plaque. The 2005 book by Hagen includes this episode. Many places in the United States, and some in Canada, were given names that included the word nigger, usually named after a person, or for a perceived resemblance of a geographic feature to a human being, see niggerhead. Most of these place names have long been changed. In 1967, the United States Board on Geographic Names changed the word nigger to Negro in 143 place names. In West Texas, Dead Nigger Creek was renamed Dead Negro Draw. Both names probably commemorate the Buffalo Soldier tragedy of 1877. Curtis Island in Maine used to be known as either Negro or Nigger Island. The island was renamed in 1934 after Cyrus H. K. Curtis, publisher of the Saturday Evening Post and who lived locally. It had a baseball team who wore uniforms emblazoned with Nigger Island, or in one case, Nigger Ilsand. Negro Head Road, or Nigger Head Road, referred to many places in the Old South where black body parts were displayed and warning sea lynching in the United States. Some renamings honor a real person. As early as 1936, Nigger Hollow in Pennsylvania, named after Daniel Hughes, a free black man who saved others once underground railroad, was renamed Freedom Road. Nigger Nate Grade Road. Near Temecula, California, named for Nate Harrison, an ex-slave and settler, was renamed Nathan Harrison Grade Road in 1955, at the request of the NAACP. Sometimes other substitutes for nigger were used. Niggerhead Mountain, at Burnett, Texas, was named because the forest atop it resembled a black man's hair. In 1966, the First Lady, Lady Burr Johnson, denounced the racist name asking the U.S. Board on Geographic Names and the U.S. Forest Service to rename it, becoming Colored Mountain in 1968. Other renamings were more creative. Nigger Head Rock, protruding from a cliff above Highway 421, north of Pennington Gap, Virginia, was renamed Great Stone Face in the 1970s. Some names have been metaphorically or literally wiped off the map. In the 1990s, the public authorities stripped the names of Niggertown Marsh and then neighboring Niggertown Knoll in Florida from public record and maps, which was the site of an early settlement of freed black people. A watercourse in the Sacramento Valley was known as Big Nigger Sam Slough. Sometimes a name changes more than once. A peak above Santa Monica, California was first renamed Niggerhead Mountain, and in February 2010 was renamed again to Ballard Mountain, in honor of John Ballard, a black pioneer who settled the area in the 19th century. A point on the lower Mississippi River, in West Baton Rouge Parish, that was named Free Nigger Point until the late 20th century, first was renamed Free Negro Point, but currently is named Wilkinson Point. Niggerville Canyon in southeast Utah was named after William Grandstaff, a mixed-race cowboy who lived there in the late 1870s. In the 1960s, it was renamed Negro Bill Canyon. Within the past few years, there has been a campaign to rename it again, as Grandstaff Canyon but this is opposed by the local NAACP chapter, whose president said Negro is an acceptable word. However the trailhead for the hiking trail up the canyon was renamed in September 2016 to Grand Staff Trailhead. The new sign for the trailhead was stolen within five days of installation. A few places in Canada also used the word. At Penticton, British Columbia, 
Niggerto Mountain was renamed Mountain Kuala. The place name derived from a 1908 Christmas story about three black men who died in a blizzard. The next day, the bodies of two were found at the foot of mountain. John Ware, an influential cowboy in early Alberta, has several features named after him, including Nigger John Ridge, which is now John Ware Ridge. Black listeners often react to the term differently, depending on whether it is used by white speakers or by black speakers. In the former case, it is regularly understood as insensitive or insulting, in the latter, it may carry notes of in-group disparagement, and is often understood as neutral or affectionate, a possible instance of reappropriation. In the black community, nigger is often rendered as nigga, representing the arhotic pronunciation of the word in African American English. This usage has been popularized by the rap and hip hop music cultures and is used as part of an inch group lexicon and speech. It is not necessarily derogatory and is often used to mean homie or friend. Acceptance of intra group usage of the word nigga is still debated, although it has established a foothold amongst younger generations. The NAACP denounces the use of both nigga and nigger. Mixed race usage of nigga is still considered taboo, particularly if the speaker is white. However, trends indicate that usage of the term in intragroup settings is increasing even amongst white youth, due to the popularity of rap and hip hop culture. According to Arthur K. Spears in Diverse Issues in Higher Education, 2006, Kevin Cato, meanwhile, observes In several English speaking countries, Niggerhead or Niggerhead was used as a name for many sorts of things, including commercial products, places, plants and animals, as described above. It also is or was a colloquial technical term in industry, mining, and seafaring. Nigger is defect, a hidden problem, derives from nigger in the woodpile, a U.S. slave era phrase denoting escaped slaves hiding in train transported woodpiles. In the 1840s, the Morning Chronicle newspaper report series London Labour and the London Poor by Henry Mayhew, records the usages of both nigger and its false cognate nigger denoting a false bottom for a great. In American English, nigger lover initially applied to abolitionists, then to white people sympathetic towards black Americans. The portmanteau word wigger, white plus nigger, denotes a white person emulating street black behavior, hoping to gain acceptance to the hip-hop, thug, and gangsta subcultures. Norman Mailer wrote of the antecedents of this phenomenon in 1957 in his essay The White Negro. The euphemism the N-word became mainstream American English usage during the racially contentious O.J. Simpson murder case in 1995. Key prosecution witness Detective Mark Furman, of the Los Angeles Police Department, who denied using racist language on duty, impeached himself with his prolific use of nigger in tape recordings about his police work. The recordings, by screenplay writer Laura McKinney, were from a 1985 research session wherein the detective assisted her with a screenplay about LAPD policewomen. Furman excused his use of the word saying he used nigger in the context of his bad cop persona. Media personnel who reported on Furman's testimony substituted the N-word for nigger. Latin for black, occurs in Latinate scientific nomenclature and is the root word for some homophones of nigger, sellers of niger seed used as bird feed, sometimes use the spelling Niger seed. The classical Latin pronunciation sounds like the English, occurring in biologic and anatomic names, such as Hylciamus Niger, Black Henbane, and even for animals that are not in fact black, such as Scurus Niger, Fox Squirrel. Nigra is the Latin feminine form of Niger, Black, used in biologic and anatomic names such as Substantia Nigra, Black Substance. The word niggardly, miserly, is etymologically unrelated to nigger, derived from the Old Norse word nig, stingy, and the Middle English word niggin. In the U.S., this word has been misinterpreted as related to nigger and taken as offensive. In January 1999, David Howard, a white Washington, D.C. city employee, was compelled to resign after using niggardly in a financial context, while speaking with black colleagues, who took umbrage. After reviewing the misunderstanding, Mayor Anthony Williams offered to reinstate Howard to his former position. Howard refused reinstatement but took a job elsewhere in the mayor's government. The denotations of nigger also comprehend non-black slash non-white and other disadvantaged people. Some of these terms are self-chosen, to identify with the oppression and resistance of black Americans, others are ethnic slurs used by outsiders. Jerry Farber's 1967 essay, The Student as Nigger, used the word as a metaphor for what he saw as the role that is forced on students. Farber had, at that time, 
been a frequently arrested activist in the civil rights movement while he was also beginning his career as a literature professor. In his 1968 autobiography White Niggers of America, the precocious autobiography of a Quebec terrorist, Pierre Vallière, a Front de Libération du Quebec leader, refers to the oppression of the Québécois people in North America. In 1969, in the course of being interviewed by the British magazine Nova, artist Yoko Ono said woman is the nigger of the world. Three years later, her husband, John Lennon, published the song Woman is the Nigger of the World about the worldwide phenomenon of discrimination against women which was socially and politically controversial to U.S. sensibilities. San nigger, an ethnic slur against Arabs, and timber nigger and prairie nigger, ethnic slurs against Native Americans, are examples of the racist extension of nigger upon other non-white peoples. In 1978 singer Patti Smith used the word in rock and roll nigger. In 1979 English singer Elvis Costello used the phrase White Nigger in Oliver's Army, a song describing the experiences of working-class soldiers in the British military forces on the Murder Mile, a term used to describe Belfast during the Troubles, where White Nigger was a common British pejorative for Irish Catholics. Later, the producers of the British talent show Stars in Their Eyes forced a contestant to censor one of its lines, changing, all it takes is one itchy trigger, one more widow, one less white nigger too. One less white figure. The editor of Green Egg, a magazine described in the Encyclopedia of American Religions as a significant periodical, published an essay entitled Niggers Off the New Age. This argued that neo pagans were treated badly by other parts of the New Age movement. Other languages, particularly Romance languages, have words that sound similar to nigger, or homophones, but do not mean the same dot just because the words are cognate i.e. they ultimately derive from the same Latin stem explained above, does not mean that they have the same denotation dictionary meaning, or connotation, emotional association. Whether a word is abusive, pejorative, neutral, affectionate, old-fashioned, etc. depends on its cultural context. How a word is used in English does not determine how a similar-sounding word is used in another language. Conversely, many languages have ethnic slurs that are disparaging of other people i.e. words that serve a similar function to nigger, but these usually stem from completely different roots. Some examples of how other languages refer to a black person in a neutral and in a pejorative way include. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.